Week eight of the NFL season is here. I want to jump in and do some predictions. Really exciting week ahead of us. I'm very, very pumped for what's to come. There's some games that I just look at and go, oh my gosh, that's going to be fun. Remember, the way I do predictions is I pick the general theme of a game. I don't always pick a winner, but I do want to start with probably the two least exciting games, in my opinion, where the winner feels very, very obvious. So New York is playing two dominant teams in the NFL this week. On Monday Night Football, you have the Buccaneers and the Giants. That's Tom Brady, his loaded offense with a ton of weapons, a really good Buccaneers defense against the Giants, who are a team that is rebuilding. Uh, They do have an interesting young quarterback. Interesting because I'm not sure whether he's good or not yet. We're kind of, he's in limbo. We're waiting to see. I just need more, for me personally, to make a decision on whether Daniel Jones is going to work in the NFL or not. I just need a larger sample size. I want more and more information. I'm going to be very interested to see how Daniel Jones handles what I look at as a very good Buccaneers defense. The question is, I think Daniel Jones might get shut down. Uh, They got a good pass rush. They have two really good corners. And I, I, I just wonder if Daniel Jones can make good decisions. I don't expect him to light anybody up, but can he take care of the ball Is he going to have a few, a turnover, like no turnovers would be really great for Daniel Jones. If they lose, but Daniel Jones has no turnovers and plays a clean game, that'd be a really big win for them. But the Buccaneers should win this game very, very easily. Now the New York Jets play the Kansas City Chiefs this week. The Chiefs should win easily as well. It's a total mismatch. It's one of the best teams in the NFL against one of the very worst teams in the NFL. And uh, the Jets appear destined for the number one overall pick. They just are terrible. There's even rumors they're going to trade their starting quarterback, Sam Darnold. So I I think, man, the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes are so good. And then they somehow, Kansas City still somehow has an underrated defense. They're very, very good on defense as well. And I think the Jets are going to get blown out and beaten very easily by Kansas City. I know. You're like, whoa, Zach, slow down. Controversial take. The Jets lose. To the Chiefs, yeah, obviously that's what's going to happen, and uh, no reason to spend any more time talking about it. Now, the Rams and the Dolphins is a game that, I don't know, I would not count out the Miami Dolphins here. A lot of people are like, the Rams are going to win very easily. I don't feel that way. All eyes are going to be on the rookie quarterback for the Dolphins, Tua Tonga Valoa, making his very first start ever in the NFL. But I'm actually really excited to watch Miami's defense. How does their defense play against Sean McVay's offense? Miami's defense against Sean McVay's offense for the Rams. That's the matchup I'm really excited for. Miami's defense is better than people give them credit for. They play man coverage really well. They got a couple of good corners. And uh, I would not count out the Dolphins there simply because of their defense. Now, Tua and the Dolphins offense, the key here is their game plan. They're playing against the Rams defense with a really good corner, Jalen Ramsey, and Aaron Donald, who I believe is the most dominant defensive lineman in the entire NFL. He takes over games. He can stuff the run inside. He also, as a defensive tackle, can generate a lot of pressure inside, and also that helps the people on the outside, the edge rushers around him. Aaron Donald is problem number one. Jalen Ramsey is problem number two. The Dolphins need to find a way to get the ball out of to a tongue of Loa's hands very quickly. A lot of quick game, some screens maybe. Get the ball out of his hands quickly. Um, I think this is a very tough defense to have your first NFL start against because you got a great corner on the outside, a guy who's going to generate a lot of pressure inside. I don't envy Tua, but also I heard someone, I can't remember who said this. Maybe it was one of my friends, I don't know. Someone was talking about how you can't hide your quarterback from a defense. Everybody has got a dude somewhere, and that's totally accurate. I mean, it, I, I don't know that Tua is going to do great in this game, but you can't just be like, well, we like, he's our best quarterback. We like him. want to see what he has. But since we're playing a good defense, let's shield him away from this one this week. I don't think that's the right way to do it either. So if Tua's awful, I wouldn't panic. Remember Tua's little brother, Talia, had a horrible first game at Maryland on Friday night. Last night just dominated Minnesota was phenomenal. So one game is not a big enough sample size to get a good read on whether a guy is going to succeed or fail. So if Tua's like, really struggles or is, you know, awkward at first in the NFL, don't panic. But I I don't know. Because of the Dolphins' defense, I would not count them out of this game. The, the Dolphins have an opportunity to beat the Rams on Sunday. Do not count them out. Now, the Raiders and the Cleveland Browns. Oh, man. Um, this is These are two teams that have quarterbacks that I don't yet trust, 
even though I want to. Baker Mayfield and Derek Carr, two guys who, oh man, I so badly want them to be better, right? And and Baker has played really well last week. Derek Carr has played well at times. And the Browns and the Raiders are weirdly similar franchises right now where they want to run the ball really well. They have young defense, which is making progress and growing on defense. And the Raiders have a rookie receiver, Henry Ruggs, who I think could be a wild card in this game. He has a knack for, he did it earlier in the year, making big plays. Against the Chiefs, he had two really big catches where you go, oh, my gosh. Henry Ruggs is a freak of nature, and he is dominant physically and could generate a big play in this game. Now, I believe that the Browns are a more talented roster from top to bottom. I think the Browns win this game. It could be close, though, but the matchup I'm really interested in Miles Garrett is the defensive end for the Browns. He is dominant. He is really, really... It feels like the NFL hasn't really understood to this point of the year that if you leave Miles Garrett in a one-on-one matchup, he's going to get after your quarterback. He will create a tackle over loss. He will sack your quarterback. He will get a forced fumble. Miles Garrett might have a big day against the Raiders unless they take him very seriously and double-team him nearly every play. And uh, for whatever reason this year, people have not taken Miles Garrett seriously enough, and it makes no sense to me whatsoever. How about the Titans and the Bengals? The Titans should win this game easily. They're a better team. They got, uh, you know, a good quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. They got a good running back, Derrick Henry. They run the ball well. They play good defense. However, I believe the Titans win this game. I'm still excited to watch the Browns, uh, excuse me, the Bengals rookie quarterback. Have I said Browns? The Titans Bengals. I'm excited to watch the Bengals rookie quarterback, Joe Burrow, against this really good Titans defense. It's a good opportunity for Joe Burrow to grow and learn and get challenged by a good defense. So I believe the Tennessee Titans beat the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday. But I also think that whether I think the Titans win, it's still interesting to watch how Joe Burrow handles this really good Titans defense. Sunday night football is going to be a mess. You have the Eagles and the Cowboys. Sunday night, uh, the Cowboys are likely going to be playing Ben DiNucci at quarterback. He's a rookie seventh-round pick out of James Madison. He started the year as their third-string quarterback. Dak got hurt. Andy Dalton got hurt. And this is a game that the Philadelphia Eagles have to win. There's a lot of pressure on the Eagles. There's a lot of pressure on their quarterback, Carson Wentz. The Cowboys are a mess. You cannot lose this game to the Cowboys. They're awful. I think that the Eagles could run the ball really, really well in this game. The Cowboys' run defense is atrocious. And uh, I'm picking the Eagles to win this game. They'd better win this game. And if the Cowboys beat the Eagles on Sunday night, I don't, it's just, uh, it, it would compound that the NFC is even worse than I thought, right? It looks like the Cowboys are horrible. And if the Eagles are bad enough to lose to the terrible Cowboys, I just go, I, it's an endless rabbit hole of horrible, awful football. And it's just, uh, it, uh, the NFC East is, a, East is a mess anyway. The Eagles cannot afford to lose to the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. Now, the 49ers and the Seahawks, this game could go either way. I honestly wish, wish this was the Sunday night game. It's a great matchup. Both teams are well coached. It's really Russell Wilson against the Kyle Shanahan designed 49ers offense. I'm excited to watch that matchup. It's fun. It's interesting. The 49ers have a ton of injuries. And so I'm going to pick Seattle. I, For me personally, I look at this game and go, what could be the deciding factor late in this game? It's Russell Wilson. And I, I, I just believe in Russell Wilson here to elevate his team and win this game. And if you said, hey, who's going to win? At the You know, last year, Russell Wilson made it. The 49ers game is really, really close and really, really interesting when the 49ers were at full strength. This year, they're injured. They're hurt. They're not at full strength. Uh, the 49ers' pass rush is not what it once was last year. And so I think the Seahawks win this game, but it's interesting. It feels like a coin toss. I'm going to go with Seattle here simply because I buy into Russell Wilson taking over and dominating late in this game to make it happen. However, weird side note, for whatever reason, Seattle seems to just be just a a team that doesn't know how to figure it out in the fourth quarter. Every time I watch Seattle in prime time, they make an odd mistake at the end of the fourth quarter that costs them the game, it feels like, or makes it really interesting and close for no reason. So it's a toss-up. I'm picking Seattle here simply because of Russell Wilson, but it's going to be a really fun, interesting game regardless. 
Now, the L.A. Chargers against the Denver Broncos. It's a AFC West divisional game. I'm so excited. It's going to be really, really fun. You have two young quarterbacks here, Justin Herbert against Drew Locke. That's the the story here that's interesting. Both teams have good rosters, by the way. I think Justin Herbert's going to shine. I think Justin Herbert is probably the more the more talented quarterback here. And Drew Locke, I watched him play the Patriots, had two late interceptions. It's hard for me to have I, – I, I don't know. I, I have no idea who's going to win here. I'm excited to watch it. It feels like a toss-up where either team could win. But I, I, here's my prediction for this game. I don't know who's going to win this game. I, I do believe Justin Herbert lights up the stat sheet. He's going to be great. I would hope Drew Locke does. I don't know. Uh, it feels hit or miss. Remember the against the Patriots, the Broncos had six field goals. Like it's just they couldn't finish drives. Drew Locke had two interceptions late, which is just bad plays and bad decisions. And so here's my my one prediction from this game. I will make. I don't know which one it will be, but this game is going to be decided by. A late mistake by one of these young quarterbacks. Whoever doesn't have the late mistake by a young quarterback is going to win this game between the Chargers and the Broncos. How about the Vikings and the Packers? Another another divisional game, the NFC North this time. The Vikings and the Packers. I. This is a game the Packers should win. Should win. But should doesn't necessarily mean they will win. That's an important key there. I know Minnesota has problems. Uh, their offense is embarrassing and it looks, you know, just inept and really bad. Kirk Cousins is a problem, has a name it's hard to say even. But Minnesota, for all their problems, they always have a good game plan on defense. That's the one thing you can count on is that Minnesota, even on games where they give up a lot of a lot of points, they always have a moment where I go, that's a great design on defense. That's a great scheme. That's a great blitz. That's a great this or that. So The matchup here to watch, obviously, in my opinion, is how Aaron Rodgers plays against Mike Zimmer's defense. The Vikings really interesting, well-coached, and disciplined defense. But at the end of the day, I want you to ask yourself. I think the Packers win this game. Ask yourself this. Do you really think that a Kirk Cousins-led team has any opportunity and any chance to beat a really good Packers team led by Aaron Rodgers? I certainly have no confidence in Kirk Cousins in this moment. I don't know why you would. And so I think the Packers win by a lot here. Uh, but again, Aaron Rod- the best matchup here is Aaron Rodgers against that Vikings defense. And that's that's not saying much because I think that the, the opposite is is just a bad matchup. I think Kirk Cousins might get horribly uh, – it might, it might be bad here. Now I want to talk about the Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I – I want to come clean here. As I prepared this topic, I was thinking about the the games this week, and you have, you know, there, here are the best games in my opinion this week. I have the Raiders Browns should be really interesting, feels like a coin toss. Chargers Broncos should be really interesting. The Seahawks and the 49ers. What makes a good game in my opinion going in is when I look at the matchup and I go, I don't know who's going to win. And when I think I don't know who's going to win, I go. I'm excited to watch that because I'm going to learn something and see hopefully something interesting that comes down to the wire. Last week, Titans-Steelers, I felt that way. And I thought that when I started preparing this topic, I was going to say, Ravens-Steelers is going to be a really good, really interesting game. One team is you know 6-0, and one team is 5-1. and Like, oh yeah, a matchup that I don't know who's going to win. And then I thought about it more and more and more. And I actually think the Steelers win this game... I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable picking a, a winner here. I think the Steelers win. Here's why. The Steelers play the run better than any other defense in the NFL. The strength of the Steelers is stopping the run. The Steelers, in fact, they shut down Derrick Henry last week for the Tennessee Titans. I was like, how did you limit Derrick Henry to that few yards on that many carries? I went, wow, that's a big deal. And then I think about, you know, I feel really strongly about the, I love the weapons the Steelers have. They have Chase Claypool, Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, who's really great after the catch, making people miss. James Washington is a receiver that makes good catches down the sideline. You have Eric Ebron, James Conner, Benny Snell, who's really made himself a whole new guy. The Ravens have Marcus Peters at corner, who's a guy that I, I think is really good, but he takes a lot of risks. And I, I think Big Ben could have a big day here. And 
this feels like a prove it game for the Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. The Steelers are lined up to do really well here. You know, they stop the run well. That's what the Ravens do. The strength is the Steelers have a really good offense. It makes a lot of plays. Lamar Jackson's got to step up in this game for the Ravens and win with his arm. I don't know that he can. I I don't want to I'm not trying to trash Lamar Jackson. I love Lamar. I think he's awesome. I think he's a I, the the human being is so cool that I think every time Lamar proves anybody wrong, I love it. I'm not trying to hate on the guy at all. And I hope I hope Lamar comes out on Sunday and throwing the ball shreds the Pittsburgh Steelers. But it feels like this could be a moment where the matchup isn't good. And I, I guess what I'm saying here is we're going to learn a lot about Lamar Jackson. When the running game is taken away or when he's challenged in the running game a lot, can Lamar Jackson make plays with his arm late in a game to win and beat the Steelers on Sunday? That's what we will find out. That's what I can't wait to see. And I think the Steelers win this game. I'll say it out loud. As I look it through the, through the matchup, the way the Steelers play the run, their offensive weapons, I believe the Pittsburgh Steelers win this game. It'll be really fun to watch. I hope you do. And I have concern about Lamar Jackson. Now, the Patriots and the Bills. Both teams have been playing really badly. Now, the Bills are 5-2. and two, The Patriots are 2-4. and four, And at the end of the day, the Bills have more talent. But the Bills got embarrassed by the Titans. They got beat pretty badly by the Chiefs. Uh, they played badly last week against the Jets and barely won. They had... The, the, the Bills had six field goals last week to beat the Jets. They only won 18 to 12 or 18 to, 18 to 10. I think 18 to 10. Yeah, I think eight, eight because the, yeah, the Jets were up 10 to nothing. So uh, the Bills beat the Jets 18 to 10 last week. And I went, I, that's not an impressive win at all. Like they were supposed to clean things up and they didn't. And I've been begging Buffalo to please run the ball and they have it repeatedly. So. You, you do have the Patriots, Cam Newton coming off of a, a game with three interceptions. The Patriots do not have Julian Edelman, and I have no confidence in the Patriots' offense. So I still believe the Bills are going to win this game. But I do say I, I, I hate betting against the Patriots. It makes me uncomfortable. So I'm going to pick the Bills here to win this game. Neither team has been very impressive recently, and it feels like two teams that have been trending downward, and it could go either way. But at the end of the day, the Bills have more talent. They should win. I guess maybe that's the angle here is the pressure's on Buffalo. They should win this game. The question is, will they? Especially, I mean, think about it. I'm sorry to stay on this game for a second, but in the AFC East, the Patriots have dominated for so stinking long. And people really, really, really want to see the Bills finally take control of this division. I don't know that they can. I will find out. That's what this game is going to be about this week is can the Bills beat their long-standing team that's done the Bill the Patriots have dominated the Bills for a long, long time. Can the Bills get revenge and finally take out the Patriots? That's what I am curious to watch on Sunday. Now the Colts and the Lions, I'm tentatively gonna pick the Colts. They have a much better roster. Uh but I I always say this about the Lions, and they were it was proven right last week by the Falcons. And it was proven right by, we've seen this multiple times this year, where if you give the Lions opportunities, the Lions beat the Cardinals, the Lions beat the Falcons last week on a oh, the last second touchdown with two seconds left. If you give Detroit an opportunity to beat you, they will. They've done it time and time again. And the Colts quarterback, Phillip Rivers, has a habit, a frustrating habit of throwing boneheaded, bad, embarrassing interceptions in terrible moments. And although Phillip is getting more and more comfortable, he had a good game last time I watched him, the key to this game is Phillip Rivers. If Phillip Rivers doesn't play well or has a bad interception late, Detroit will beat them. You have to play clean, and I don't know that the Colts can. We'll find out. I'm picking the Colts because they're a better team, but my fear is that Phillip Rivers is going to get in his own way and give the Lions an opportunity to win this game on Sunday. Now, the final game of the week I'm going to talk about I guess the final game I haven't talked about yet this week because I'm talking about all of them. The Saints play the Bears, and this feels like a really weird game because the Bears are 5-2, and two, but a lot of people doubt them. They don't feel good about them. The Saints are 4-2, and two, and it's also a game where you have strength versus strength where the Saints' offense against the Bears' defense. The Bears' defense is really good. The Saints' offense is their strength, and a lot of people are doubting Nick Foles, the Bears' quarterback. 
I believe in Nick Foles in this moment. Here's why. It has to kind of have to do with the Saints because I don't trust the Saints defense at all. But it's also a crucial moment for Chicago because they are at a focal point in their season. They need their quarterback, Nick Foles, to step up. He's got like the stat line for him is like six touchdowns and six interceptions. It's been a really rocky, uneven season, even though they're five and two. And so Nick Foles has got to make plays here. I think he can. I don't have a lot of confidence in the Saints defense. I, I believe in Nick Foles here. And it's also worth noting that the Saints have no Michael Thomas again. And the Saints barely beat the Panthers last week. And, you know, without Michael Thomas, uh, they barely beat the Panthers. I also got to recognize that the Bears defense is a lot better than what they're going to play. They played in Carolina. So I kind of see it that if the Bears offense can score 20 points or more, maybe more than 20 points, if the Bears offense can score 21 points or more, they can win this game because... The Saints have given up more than 20 points every single game so far this year. I like the minimum is like 24, actually. They gave up 24 to the Raiders, I believe. Uh, no, they scored 24. They gave up 34 to the Raiders. So my point here is that, remember when Derek Carr shredded the Saints? That was a moment where I went, oh, I don't, I don't trust the Saints defense at all. And I look at Nick Foles and go, Nick Foles could do it. Derek Carr did. So I'm picking the Bears to win this game simply because I don't trust the Saints defense. Uh, the Saints don't have Michael Thomas, and they're playing a good defense Chicago with Khalil Mack, who can generate a lot of pressure against Drew Brees and cause Drew Brees a lot of problems. So the Bears will beat the Saints on Sunday.